Live right here on the early line on Sports Grid. It's a football Friday on TEL. And that's not just week three of the NFL season. That's week four of this college football campaign as well. He is Joe Ranieri. I am Ben Stevens. Four ranked versus ranked top 25 tilts in week number four. And it gets started tonight in Lincoln, Nebraska. The kids have the day off from school. The Huskers saying we are only caring about the football game on this Friday. It is the first ranked versus ranked game the Huskers will host in Lincoln that features two teams inside the AP Top 25 in over a decade, Joe, since 2013. And it's over a touchdown in favor of Nebraska. 42 and a half is the total as well. Number 22, Nebraska. Number 24, Illinois. Joe, as you look at this game, more than a touchdown with a total only at 42 and a hook. Can the Corn Huskers be dominant enough to cover this number tonight? Well, it's it's a fascinating game because here we've got, I think, uh, Ben, we've got two teams that are pretty even when it comes to the defensive side of the ball. I, I'd say I don't really give the edge to either one of these. Home field matters. Lincoln is going to be crazy uh tonight here they haven't had a whole lot to celebrate in a long time there ben uh but they got something to be excited about now and i think that place is going to be absolutely bonkers offensively though there i don't think it's close i think illinois is a mediocre offensive team i think nebraska is much better than mediocre with dylan uh Riola as his quarterback here 74 percent completion rate this is the time always, every time with Matt Rule, where he takes over a struggling program, the biggest move is always in the second year. That's when you see yeah. what he does and how he takes these uh, these teams and uh, these schools and elevates them. They win tonight on the national stage like this, and not only win, Ben, but win convincingly mm -hmm. and cover. We're, we're, we're waking up to a different Nebraska uh, next week in the standings for sure. And so, Joe, that's the thing, right? Because if they win and cover this game, it's dominance because the total is 42 and a half. That means they win comfortably in a game that features two teams that have been great defensively this year. Nebraska and Illinois are two of 23 FBS programs around the country holding opponents to less than 10 points per game. Both have been very good on that side of the football. They are two teams also that have covered the number in all three games. The Huskers, one of four FBS programs to be booked at a, as a favorite in all three and cover. That's Tennessee, Texas, Ole Miss, and Nebraska, the other three teams, by the way, ranked in the top six nationally in this country. But Illinois also won outright against the ranked team, although Kansas is no longer ranked. They did week two at home in Champaign. Illinois' defense has been great. They have forced eight takeaways. The biggest key in this game, Joe, is Illinois on the ground. Can they generate anything offensively against a Huskers defense that is now top 10 once again? in rushing defense with Tony White, the brilliant D.C. And Illinois is really good, as we shared defensively, but they're allowing a buck 25 per game on the ground. Even Central Michigan ran for more than 140 last week, and Illinois won that game 30-9, to nine, covering as a 20-and-a-half point favorite. That is the key. If, down, if Dante Dowdell and Ramir Johnson can have a big night on the ground and Dylan Riola continues to play yep. clean football, Nebraska could cover as more than a touchdown favorite tonight. It's the Big Ten opener for both the Huskers and the Illini. It's the Big Ten opener for Michigan, the reigning national champs, and the Big Ten debut of USC in the big house on Saturday afternoon in Ann Arbor. And, Joe, we'll talk a lot about line movement. It's one of the themes for week four. This not necessarily moving a ton in the last 48 hours, but moved a ton from where it opened. In the summer, Michigan was a nine-and-a-half point favorite for the early look at this Week 4 matchup in the Big Ten opener against Southern Cal. It is now five-and-a-half points, two touchdowns of movement in favor of USC. Is the move too drastic, or does it feel fitting for where these two teams enter this Week 4 matchup? I, I got to say, uh, we have never seen a, a look at line uh, like that. And now here we go. Michigan again at home uh, being an underdog, getting five and a half points. We had the same conversation a couple of weeks ago about Texas, right? 
We right. said, how in the world? Why are they just begging you to take Michigan? Like they're begging you. Uh, well, I, I think we're at the point now where you have to make a decision with this Michigan team. Uh, if they are an underdog at home, then there's probably a good reason for it. Coming off a bye, Lincoln Riley, offensively, can they have success against this defense that's been on the field entirely too much so far this season yeah. for Michigan here? You got a quarterback change, but the quarterback change just means they're going to run the ball more. And if they're going to run mm -hmm. the ball, that's the one thing the USC defense has not been good at so far this year. But they know what's coming, coming out of the bye. Can they make the adjustments and win this game rather easily? I'm of the mindset it's a down year for Michigan. When they are getting yeah. points at home, they're getting them for a reason, and chances are it's probably not enough. They were the underdog against Texas near a touchdown. The Longhorns brought the fight to the maize and blue. They held Michigan to only 80 yards on the ground. Davis Warren started that game. It is now Alex Orgy. But Joe is right. It's a downfield rushing attack for Michigan in this matchup. USC did plank Utah State in its most recent game. That was week two. It was the first shutout Southern Cal has pitched since 2011. Can they stand the test, though, against a Michigan offense that ran for more than 300 last week against Arkansas State? And that is going to be the theme. Run the damn ball for the Maize and Blue on Saturday. Less than a touchdown now, Joe, in favor of Tennessee. On the road in Norman. We said this stat yesterday. It's a top 15 tilt. Oklahoma, number 15 in the country. The last time a ranked Oklahoma program was a home underdog of four points or greater 1978 what do you make of the spread near a touchdown in this one yeah uh keep it simple guys if it ain't broke don't fix it josh heupel is the most profitable head coach in college football in the first half covering numbers if it ain't broke don't fix it oklahoma their offense is terrible with jackson arnold yeah, it has not been good. We'll have a few more thoughts on that game and the rest of the Saturday slate next. The SEC debut for number 15, Oklahoma. The SEC opener for who has been the most impressive cover team in the country so far this year, sixth-ranked Tennessee. Under Josh Heupel, who, of course, knows Norman very well, led Oklahoma to a BCS National Championship in 2000, worked on the staff for nearly a decade as a quarterback's coach and then a co-offensive coordinator under Bob Stoops. He became the head coach in Knoxville, Joe, in 2021. In that span, Tennessee is 22-9 and against the spread as the favored side. That is the fourth best cover percentage in that time in college football. This year, they're a perfect 3-0, covering games by more than 27 points per game on average. It is the best cover margin by a good margin in college football but you've got an Oklahoma team ranked in a conference matchup with the first true road test Tennessee has seen this season yes they went to Charlotte hammered a ranked foe at the time at NC State that game was neutral site but of course the Wolfpack not from far away in Raleigh is it too much love for Tennessee or is the number the number for a reason and the ball should roll no see here's the problem uh, Oklahoma is offense we know defensively yeah. they're going to give tennessee a run for their money and as much success as tennessee has had offensively again so far it's been non-conference play and quite honestly it's games that uh they should have handled and they did and they've handled them pretty impressively which is what josh heupel uh does yeah. however it's the offense of oklahoma and we knew they were going to be a mess early on ben heading into the season mm -hmm. you and i even had a conversation about this team we said they're going to have five new starters on the offensive line here. It's going to take them a little time. I don't know that they've had enough time uh, against yeah. Tennessee. This is their first true road game. My fear is Tennessee gets out and plays this game from in front, which forces Oklahoma to become one-dimensional, and that is why this is a touchdown line and not anything lower. It's a really fascinating quarterback matchup between two guys still technically in their freshman year that each got their first start at the respective programs, taking over for the guys that had been there. Nico Iameleava for Joe Milton and Jackson Arnold for Dylan Gabriel. They got their first start in bowl games and gave us a glimpse of the future. Nico Iameleava has been great so far for Tennessee, 
Jackson Arnold, not so much. Less than a buck 75 through the air in all three games, but maybe even more damning, Joe. He's O'Hughes' leading rusher with 159 yards mm -hmm. on the ground so far. Tennessee is the best scoring offense in the country and the second best total offense in the country. That was expected. Again, it's been Kent State and Chattanooga. Although a power conference team that has been really good in NC State and was ranked at the time, they only allowed three points to the Wolfpack. They're the second best total defense in the country are the Volunteers. And Oklahoma is the third worst offense in the SEC, only better than South Carolina and Kentucky. And at least the Gamecocks and the Cats have played a couple of conference games. Now let's talk about the other showdown in the state of Oklahoma on Saturday. Joe's alma mater, the Pokes of Stillwater, a two-and-a-half-point home favorite now against Utah. It is a ranked versus ranked game. Oklahoma State 14th in the country. Utah checks in at number 12. Joe, we have talked about this game earlier in the week. It opened at two in favor of the Cowboys. It flipped back to Utah as the favorite. Now we see Oklahoma State laying two-and-a-half at home. It would seem to me... That's line movement based on the status of Cam Rising. You have any idea if he's going to play tomorrow in Stillwater? The, well, the market seems to continue to think they do, Ben. And, and let's just go back. We talked about this on Tuesday. The game opened up across the board where Oklahoma State was a slight favorite at home against Utah. Then, for some inexplicable reason, even though Kyle Whittingham, the one coach in college football that will never leak anything never. about any of his players to anyone, the market ran to the window and steamed Utah to become a two, two-and-a-half-point favorite. Only a couple of days ago to hear that, well, maybe he's not playing, so the market ran and steamed Oklahoma State back to two-and-a-half, and here we are, Ben. I don't yep. care whether he plays or he doesn't play. Oklahoma State should not be catching points in this spot at home, period. It's Oklahoma State on the money line for me all day. And they've been great at home under Mike Gundy in mm -hmm. Stillwater. Texas will see a new quarterback under center on Saturday. Arch Manning makes his first career start. The Longhorns are a 44.5-point favorite against UL Monroe, who has covered in both of their games so far this season. Arch's props... For Saturday, 292 and a half. He had five total touchdowns last week against UTSA. More on the early lineup now. To make sure you see it, the other notable games from the week four college football Saturday slate. An intriguing one in the Sunshine State, Joe. South Florida hosts Miami as a 16 and a half point dog. Miami has been great this year. Barely missing out on covering all of its games, missing out by the hook against Florida A and M. But Cam Rising, is, or excuse me, Cam Ward is now the Heisman Trophy favorite. He has thrown for at least 300 yards in all three games. Big 12 opener between K State and BYU. The Cougs getting six and a half in Provo. LSU takes on their second team from LA. That would be UCLA. Hefty spread in favor of the Bayou Bengals, who have been shaky. A spot a lot of people are looking, Joe. Louisville, 10.5-point favorite against Georgia Tech. We know how good the Yellow Jackets have been as an underdog under Brent Key. Loser of the game in Starkville on Saturday. Might as well pack it up for the rest of the season. I don't think Jeff Levy's going to be fired if the Bulldogs lose. If Florida loses, Billy Napier's not making his way back to Gainesville. And what a statement we could see on Saturday night. Florida State and Cal. Yes, Florida State and mm. Cal. The Bears a perfect 3-0. and The Knowles winless 0-3. All the narratives and storylines for a Saturday in college football. Yeah, uh, and those two at the bottom there just absolutely head-scratching. Uh, how Florida is laying a touchdown against anybody is beyond me on the road. And I, I'll tell you, those two teams from Florida... I watched quit uh, on their coaches at certain points in those games last week there. A&M for Florida at home in the swamp and Florida State. In what world should they be a favorite again at home? They, they've been a favorite in every game and not close. They were favored again against uh, Wilcox and Cal, who did a pretty good job of showing up as an underdog against Auburn, didn't they, on the road? No idea what these lines are all about here. Cal is 3-0 for the first time since 2019. They've won six straight regular season games. They are 2-0 against the spread 
against FBS opponents. Justin Wilcox is doing good things for the Bears, and Jaden Ott is supposed to be back, listed as probable tomorrow against an FSU defense that is really struggling to stop the run, and not just in this dismal start, but even last year when they were 13-0, not 0-3.